top. No chaser. Ladies and gentlemen, confidants, welcome to the Hennessy Zone. Straight talk, no chaser. This place was created for those topics that require, well, a little something stronger than just champagne. Over here, we think and drink responsibly. Now, let me give you a disclaimer. Everything discussed in the Hennessy Zone, all of the commentary is based on my opinion and is done so in accordance with the Fair Use Act, which allows for these discussions for the purpose of entertainment and teaching because there's wisdom to be gained from everything, whether it's good or bad. Now, we don't attempt to solve cases over here, but we do discuss them. And I love to hear your opinions about each of the cases we discuss. So please do me a favor and drop in the comments and let me know what you think about today's case. But keep it respectful because this is a safe place and we got to let them know the classy drink Hennessy too. So for this one, we're going to start off with the article and then I'll give my commentary afterwards because this one hit me a little differently, but According to CourtTV.com, and the exact link is on the screen and in the description box, just in case you want to read it for yourself, but in an article written March 8, 2024, a Florida woman said she cut her mother's heart out to inspect it, according to court documents obtained by Court TV. Erlene Tucker, 58, is charged with premeditated homicide in the March 6 death of Lucille Tucker. Officers with the Tallahassee Police Department found Lucille's body after responding to calls of a naked woman identified as Erlene trying to enter a delivery vehicle. While on the scene, Erlene led them inside her residence, which she shared with her elderly mother. After finding Lucille's body, officers directed Erlene to a couch where she said it cannot end, it will not end, the saga will continue, people, until I am in jail. I have to be in prison for my actions. A warrant states, Erlene had been hospitalized at least twice for mental health issues, the last time being 2009. A relative told police they suspected Erlene had schizophrenia, but are unaware of any medical diagnosis. During a police interview, Erlene allegedly told detectives she killed her mother and that she was a sacrificial lamb and that she was going to die with her. She later stated, I murdered my mom in that house. She was mean to me, but I didn't care. The warrant states, detectives ended the interview after trying to advise Erlene of her Miranda rights. Afterwards, the warrant continues, she made a statement referencing cutting out her mother's heart to inspect it. Erlene has continuously talked to herself almost nonstop for hours in the interview room and has made several admissions to killing her mother. Investigators say Lucille's body had multiple sharp force injuries to the center of the chest and a large wound which could be consistent with an evisceration of the heart. Officers also found a human organ in the living room. Erlene has entered a not guilty plea she is currently being held without bond. Now, in order to understand what happened, according to WCTV, and of course the link is on the screen and will also be in the description box in case anyone wants to read the actual story. Tallahassee police allege a 58 year old Tallahassee woman brutally killed her mother this week. A probable cause affidavit is shedding new light on the suspicious death turn homicide investigation. TBD swarmed a home on Hartsfield Way after finding a woman's body there Wednesday afternoon. Police said they suspected foul play in the death and detained a woman in connection to the alleged slaying. Less than 24 hours later, TBD updated the public, identifying the detainee as 58-year-old Arlene Tucker. The department said Thursday that the Tallahassee woman is now charged with murder. She is being held in the Leon County Detention Facility, according to the jail website. In the probable cause affidavit for her arrest, 
the TBD detective described the circumstances of the alleged crime and why police have charged the 58-year-old. I find there is probable cause to believe Erlene Tucker did unlawfully kill her mother, Lucille Tucker, by sharp force trauma in a premeditated fashion, the detective wrote. The two-page document describes a gruesome crime scene and a rambling confession from Tucker at the Tallahassee police station just hours after investigators discovered the alleged scene of the crime. It also outlines family concerns for Tucker's mental health. But when officers first arrived on the quiet street near Astoria Park Elementary School, but the circumstances did not seem violent. Tucker was wandering the neighborhood naked when officers arrived on Hartsfield Way on Wednesday, according to the documents. Dispatchers had received calls from a delivery driver there who said Tucker was trying to enter her vehicle. Tucker's family member also dialed 911 that day to ask for assistance getting her mother indoors, according to the papers. Officers attempted to coax the 58-year-old back into her home to get dressed, but she resisted at first. I have to go to the police station. You need to take me to the police station. I have committed a grievous crime, the detectives allege, Tucker told responding personnel. Eventually, she led officers into the town home she shared with her mother. As officers walked in, it immediately became clear the case was very serious. Once in the residence, Arlene stood over an apparent human organ, which was on the ground approximately six to eight feet in the residence past the front door, the affidavit states. Arlene began breathing heavily and grunting as officers asked her what that was. While attempting to find clothes for Tucker, officers discovered her mother's body lying face up on a bed, according to the affidavit. There was a large wound in the center of her chest, which detectives allege looked to be from the removal of part of her heart. Investigators later determined the apparent organ from the front hallway was part of a heart, according to the report. The detective also alleged investigative technology revealed traces of blood in the bathroom sink, a wall in the home, and in the hallway leading to the victim's bedroom, on a dresser in Erlene's bedroom, as well as on a knife on the dresser in Erlene's bedroom. Investigators also found a knife with traces of blood in the kitchen, according to the document. As they took in the scene and waited for backup, detectives directed Tucker to sit on the couch. Once seated, she raised her hands and then put a blanket around her before appearing to nervously laugh, the detectives wrote. She told detectives she needed to end it and that the saga would continue until she was behind bars, the affidavit said. Tallahassee police brought Tucker back to the police station for questioning. The detective wrote that the 58-year-old mostly rambled when he tried to interview her. Ultimately, she told detectives, I killed my mother, the detective alleged in the document. The TPD detective wrote that Tucker talked to herself for hours with few pauses while in the interview room. He also alleged that she referenced removing and looking at her mother's heart. Erlene later stated again, I murdered my mom in that house. She was mean to me, but I didn't care. I loved her black color, but she didn't love mine. The affidavit reads. Tucker's family member provided detectives with some insight into her mother and grandmother's relationship. While Tucker had lived in Tallahassee for five years, Lucille only moved to the capital city about 12 months ago. The affidavit says Lucille, amid deteriorating health concerns, moved to Tallahassee to live with her daughter, who was a healthcare worker. Tucker's family member told detectives she last saw Erlene and Lucille at the town home the two shared in Northwest Tallahassee just a few days before the alleged murder, according to the document. She saw them at the residence at about midnight on Sunday, according to the arrest documents. But since then, she told detectives, Erlene had displayed erratic behavior. Tucker called her family member just before 8 a.m. Wednesday. She seemed uneasy. Erlene asked her if she could be anyone other than herself, who would she be, a detective wrote. After a minute of conversation, Tucker hung up the phone. The first time the family member called back, Tucker didn't pick up. The next time, the phone call was answered, 
but the family member told police Tucker wouldn't talk to her, according to the affidavit. Finally got through about 10 minutes after the first call, but the call ended after less than 45 seconds and Tucker did not pick up again. Police have not released Lucille's approximate time of death. The 58-year-old's family member told police she suspected Arlene had schizophrenia, according to the affidavit. Family told TPD Tucker was hospitalized more than three decades ago for mental health issues in Palm Beach County. After a respite, she was hospitalized again in 2009 for similar issues, the document states. According to Leon County court records, Tucker's first appearance was Friday morning. In that hearing, she entered a conditional plea of not guilty, according to the clerk of court's website. The court has also ordered the appointment of an expert to evaluate her competency for trial, records say. Now I'm going to tell you why this video sort of gave me pause, right? Now let me start off by saying this. No one should take it into their own hands to take someone else's life. Let me say that first. Now, now, I do agree there are situations where you might have to get a little wicked, but it should only be if your life is in imminent danger. So now that I've gotten that disclaimer out there, let me say this. The reason this video kind of gives me pause is because this situation can be seen from different aspects, right? Two things that she said to the police were, one, she was mean to me. That's number one. And I know some of y'all are going to say, but she's 58 years old. Whatever she went through in the past or in her childhood, she's had enough time to get over it. And that's true. For those of you who have always had a stellar relationship with your parents, and they were the picture of perfection for you, then you probably wouldn't understand. But one of the hardest hurts to heal are those that come from parents because they are the ones out of everyone in the world who are supposed to love you. So to be hurt and rejected by them causes a different kind of wound. And some of y'all know because that's why you deal with the fear of rejection now. If we have learned anything over the past few years is that some of these parents ain't ish. And I said what I said and ain't never been ish. Some of these parents and mamas are miserable, hateful, disrespectful, devious creatures. Come on now, we saw what happened with Gypsy Rose. Now I'm not saying that they deserve to be unalive because when you have the opportunity to get an out, you take that out and you move around. But when you're seeking the approval and the love of a parent, sometimes you continue to try to put out with hopes that they will finally see that you are worthy of their love. Now, I'm not saying this was her situation because we don't have enough information, but she did say that her mother was mean to her. Now, is her mother being mean because she's ailing or is this just a history of meanness? Another thing that she said was that she loved her mother's black skin, but her mother didn't love hers now. This was another point that stuck out to me because some of our elder relatives are extremely colorist. You have some who are colorist against dark skin individuals and some who are colorist against light skin. There are dark skinned black individuals who do not like dark skinned people. They don't. And they are very vocal with letting you know they don't. They will call you things like darky, blacky, black. Oh, you so dark. A lot of the insecurities that we developed, we didn't develop them just because. We developed them due to what we heard from our own. Our parents, our grandparents, our relatives. Where do you think we heard the term African booty scratcher from? It was from what we heard from adults when we were kids. Most of us hadn't even experienced racism to hear it from white America. We heard it from our own. Some people are strong enough to flip it. They take it and use it in stage names and in pseudonyms, but others internalize it and it allows it to tear them up from the inside. Again, I'm not saying this is what happened in this situation, nor am I saying this gives anyone the right to end someone else's life. I'm saying we have to stop and think about how we treat our children and how what we say to our children and speak over them affects their lives. I would like to know what the relationship was between her and her mother growing up, especially when mental health comes into play. And the other thing they mentioned was her mental health issues. 
Now, it was alleged that she was hospitalized twice due to mental health. And that 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 concerns me, especially when according to the article, she was a healthcare worker. Whatever she was hospitalized for, did they do anything to help her or did they just let her go? One of the things that I don't understand about the mental health industry is the whole voluntary thing, especially when you can see there's something wrong with the individual and they can potentially be a harm to themselves or others. How are they allowed to check in and check out when they want? How is this voluntary? Obviously, some people can't make their own decisions, which is why they're having a mental health crisis. So why do you give them the option to? Why do you give them the option to choose whether or not they want help? If what they are dealing with is enough for them to be checked into the hospital, how is it not enough for you to hold them until they can find a solution for the crisis they are having? But we loose them back into the world with hopes of them figuring it out. So you have a healthcare worker who's working with other individuals with a mental health crisis and on the verge of a mental health break. Please make it make sense to me. So what was she hospitalized for and what did they do to help her? Especially considering she was in health care. So, you have an individual who has apparently been on the verge of a mental break, who unalived her mother, but was a healthcare worker, meaning she was potentially providing care for others who this could have potentially happened to. And I understand that it is a violation of HIPAA to ask about someone's mental health during an interview, but it leads me to believe that it could be more people on the verge of this who are caring for other individuals and no one is paying attention to the potential signs. Who is checking to ensure everyone who is providing care and in these office buildings aren't on the verge of a mental break? Not just that, but even in your homes, in your families, Who's checking on Uncle Bobo and Auntie Virginia to make sure they aren't about to hurt themselves or someone else? Who's paying attention to the cousin that the elderly auntie is always teasing to see how it's affecting them? Or, or telling the auntie, the Henri auntie to cut it out, huh? Who's paying attention to what their family is saying instead of just laughing at the punchlines? and not paying attention to the punch in the line, not hearing the hurt in the midst of the joke, and who's bold enough to say something. As a family member, if you felt your relative was schizophrenic, why not say something knowing this individual was caring for her ailing mother? By definition, schizophrenia is a chronic brain disorder that affects less than 1% of the United States population. When schizophrenia is active, symptoms, symptoms can include delusions, hallucinations, disorganized speech, trouble with thinking, and lack of motivation. It is a serious mental condition of a type involving a breakdown in the relationship between thought, emotion, and behavior, leading to faulty perception, inappropriate actions and feelings, withdrawal from reality and personal relationships into fantasy and delusion and a sense of mental fragmentation. But everyone is say nothing, do nothing, mind the business that pays you until something happens and everyone is now crying about how much they love the individual and how they knew something was wrong but didn't do anything. And the cause for it is unknown. But that brings me to another concern because we want to call everything mental health. And I'm really starting to believe that stuff like this is just demonic. Because if you can't find a physical or scientific cause, it must be spiritual. Now I know everyone doesn't believe in that or whatever. So that just means this section isn't for you. But for me, I just can't believe that someone in their right mind could take a knife and remove part of someone's heart less known your mother you just can't and if you don't have the complete control of your brain and your mind at the moment then what does what else could have that much power over you for we wrestle not against flesh and blood but against principalities against powers against the rulers of darkness of this world against spiritual wickedness in high places that's what the bible says 
So I feel this is the spirit realm impeding on the natural realm and causing physical ramifications from it. We are fighting a very spiritual battle on a daily and people are so busy being turned that we are not paying attention to the change in the atmosphere and we are being affected mentally, physically, and spiritually. And I know you believe that people are just evil. No, I don't believe people are just innately evil. I believe people deal with some very strong, negative, demonic, evil influences that they aren't strong enough to ward off. Some of us invited those influences in by the games that we played when we were children. The Charlie Charlies and the Bloody Marys. And some people even play with the Ouija boards, opening up portals into their lives, all in the name of fun and curiosity. And in ignorance, we realize that some doors are very easy to open, but hard to close. And it's crazy that we now live in a world where we have to fear being around people, even people we know and love, because you don't know if they are at or past a breaking point. And I don't care if it's mother, father, or in between, whole families are being unalive at the hands of individuals who are supposed to love them. And you want me to believe that some of this isn't demonic? Where do those thoughts come from then? They're not physical, they're spiritual. And if they don't come from God, where do you think they come from? So now you have this helpless woman that I'm praying was not the mean person her daughter alleged to be because on the flip side, sometimes we have to show our children tough love to challenge them in areas that they need to grow in. But we are in such a day and age where everything is don't judge me and you can't tell me what to do that if you say anything, it's considered a judgment. And in this case, we really don't have enough facts to make a judgment. All we know is this woman cut out her mother's heart. But my question is, the daughter that called 911, did she not know what happened? Was she too young to understand what was going on? Because were you in the house when this happened? According to the article, it was only said that she told the police her mom was naked and wouldn't come into the house. No mention of the grandmother's death. No mention of the heart at the door. No mention of the alleged blood in the bathroom sink, on the wall in the hallway leading to the victim's bedroom, on the dresser in Erlene's bedroom, as well as on the knife on the dresser in Erlene's bedroom, or the knife with traces of blood on it in the kitchen. So this woman was stabbed with two different knives. After the family member stated this woman had been behaving erratically, why wasn't anything done then? And this woman's daughter, whether she was an adult, young adult, or minor, was in the house and could have potentially been a victim herself if the police hadn't arrived. This woman was breathing heavily and grunting at the police. That's not normal, that's demonic. And according to her words, the saga is not going to end until I am in jail. So was she just getting started? Did she plan on hurting others? Or has she already harmed others? And what triggered her on this day? When will our government start doing more to assist people struggling with severe mental health issues? How many people are going to have to die before the decision is made to do more, to take mental health and depression and psychosis seriously? Because if they don't, we're going to continue to see more and more stories just like this one. First, we have an update on a developing story we've been following all afternoon. A forensics team now on scene as a woman is found dead inside a home on Tallahassee's northwest side. What we know so far. Thank you for joining us at 6. I'm Julie Montanero. And I'm Jacob Murphy. Police have been investigating outside a home on Hartsfield Way for about five hours now. That scene's still active. Our Stacey Inez joins us live from that scene. Stacey, what are you seeing? Yeah, Julie and Jacob, as you mentioned, that forensics team, they've been going in and out of the house here on Hartsfield Way for about the past hour or so. But what we do know from police is that this is considered a suspicious death, and they did tell us that foul play is suspected. So we're going to take a look at the scene here. Um, so officials still here. The scene has been pretty active since we arrived uh, around 3 o'clock today. As I mentioned, going in and out of the house, appearing to be collecting some evidence. And I've been speaking to some neighbors here today as well, and they tell me they were honestly shocked to see so 
many police cars. People said that they didn't hear any arguing, really no sign of trouble at all. Just several people mentioning to me that this is overall a quiet neighborhood. Now, one woman I spoke to, the way she described it was unnerving. She said to come home and see so many police officers kind of put people in a weird position as they're here coming back home. A lot of people have even been coming up to us asking what has been going on because they are so surprised by the law enforcement presence. But we do know that one person was detained here on scene. However, we don't have any context as to why. We did ask police though, um, if they could give us any context in terms of the nature of the death investigation um, or if this situation was domestic at all, but we have not received a response on that at this point. But of course, as we continue to learn more information, still a developing story, still a very active scene here, and we're gonna keep uh, digging for answers to bring you as much as possible when we get that information. For now, live here in Tallahassee, Stacey Inez, WCTV Eyewitness News. All right, Stacey, thank you. But new at noon, Tallahassee police have charged a woman with murder for yesterday's suspicious death. Earlene Tucker made her first court appearance this morning. Police say she killed an elderly woman at her home on Hartsfield Way. TPD says someone called 911 and told them that Tucker was in the parking lot dancing naked and trying to get into their car. Officers went into her home and found the elderly woman dead inside. Neighbors say they were shocked to see so many police near their home. Um, nerve wracking, um, kind of like um, I've never been that close to something like that before, um, kind of like in disbelief. Um, but also I know that, um, you know, this is a quiet neighborhood and nothing like that's happened before. So, you know, you never know what goes on behind closed doors. Police have not said how the elderly woman died. They say they're waiting for full autopsy results. It was a different time when I served. This is all I have for this one. Please make sure you like and subscribe if you want to be notified when we drop a new video. And drop in the comments and let me know what you think about this situation. And again, be respectful. This is a safe place and a community for thinkers. Thank you for tuning in to the Hennessy Zone. Straight talk, no chaser. Now raise those glasses high. Hennessy, Henna do. Think and drink responsibly and stay true. Till we speak again. Ta-ta.